So here we are at Sazio's Fruit Market, one of the great hidden gems in the Pikes Place Market. I've been here for 50 years now, I've been working it for 30 years. Um, we just aim to sell the best of the best. Of course, we buy from all local growers whenever we can. Uh, I've got a guy that just does my apples and pears. I got another buddy that does my tomatoes. We just try to stick with the best. Five years ago, when I first started coming out working for Aquastar at the head office doing recipes, I was walking down in my whites and all of a sudden, my friend here went, hey chef, you gotta come and try the sweetest mango you'll ever taste. So all of a sudden, he cut me off a piece of this great mango. I ate it, it was sweet. It was like eating, almost like eating a piece of sugar. Ever since then, five years, I've been coming to the produce place. So when we're looking for apples, when we're looking for something that's sweet, that something has a great bite, we have the Honey Crisp. It's uh, one of our newer apples out on the market, about seven years here to Washington State, uh, developed at the University of Minnesota. It's one of the one of the latest and greatest, one of the uh, one of the more favorite that are coming around right now. Uh, cross between a macoon and a sugar crisp. Um, nice, sweet, yet tart. It's got a great texture to it. Good all around apple to eat uh, fresh to bake. Like an apple cider, kind mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one uh, of our favorites. Absolutely fantastic flavor. And I tell you, it's a pleasure selling to people that love food. So this is the second hidden gem that I'm going to take you to in Seattle. Now I wish we had a smell of vision because the smell in this bakery is unbelievable. And Le Penier has been here since the early 80s. We opened up in 1984, I believe. It was opened by a Frenchman who couldn't find a good baguette in Seattle and decided he had to make his own. And so he brought over French bakers mm -hmm. and uh, found a great location in well, the market. A spectacular uh, location. And decided to open the bakery up and it's been going ever since. Now, there's an art to, to making there's great bread. There's definitely an art. You and know? these bakers are trained. Um, we have, um, and they've been here for years. Weather changes the bread. There's always oh, something agreed. going on. <laughs> uh, you know, there's some, been there. you know, there's some days where it's just, you know, you're like, oh shoot. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, but you know, I've never been here on the oh shoot day. Good, so, good. No, just, <laughs> there are not many of them. So here we are at the third gem here in Seattle. This is Beecher's Cheese. Again, if you could smell what we're smelling today, it's unbelievable. So we're here with Adam Saunders. Let's talk about your cheddar. Now it's made right here. Yeah, we actually kind of do a variety of variations of this, this cheddar. Our original version is actually aged for about 15 months. It's actually a little bit sharper. Um, help yourself. That actually is our reserve version of the cheese. So that's actually aged for three months less. It's actually a blend of uh, cheddar and Gruyere. We bandage wrap it and uh, it's open air aged for a year. Um, it makes it sort of a little bit of a dry, kind of very nutty cheddar. What I find is well, cheese really loves to breathe. Oh, yeah. so, I mean, it's a living thing, basically. No, and agreed, it agreed. changes everything. So that, that open air aging process mm -hmm. really um, allows it to exhibit a lot of different flavors, a lot of bit more complexities going on underneath. And now I just became, came across a gem within the gem. Beatrice not only creates great cheese, great atmosphere, great food, but they also sponsor some great organizations. And one of them is Heroes for the Homeless. We're a very small nonprofit um, organization that started about three years ago. We are serving a very vulnerable uh, segment of the homeless population. Those are those that live on the margins, so they don't come in for services. We are a group of volunteers that go out and hike under the bridges and into wooded areas, and we bring food, hygiene, clothing and other outdoor survival supplies. Nice. Tomorrow's our annual fundraiser okay. and Beecher's is one of several sponsors and so we're going to be um, serving the cheese uh, nice. at the benefit mm -hmm. and also incorporating it into some hors d'oeuvres that we're preparing for guests. It's like finding a great butcher, it's like finding a great baker. It's great to have a person who knows a little bit about cheese and you love sharing it. Yeah, and there's also a lot of uh, good local options um, around in the area. It's just really fantastic local food. And I've been saying this for so long, great food is not hard to find. In this day and age, where grocery stores dictate on what you buy, it's so nice to come to a grocery store like Vincenzo's here in Kitchener, Ontario, that is a specialty grocery store. We're going to meet Carmine, the owner, to go over all the great foods that he has to offer you, the consumer. We make a lot of all these fresh pastas ourselves. A good 
fresh pasta will compete with any good dry pasta. I like fresh pasta a little bit better because I find it's a little bit lighter on my stomach mm -hmm. than some ones, but I do like an al dente pasta, mm -hmm. so being a pasta maker, I can't say enough about a good quality Italian, like the rusticelli or the Checo pastas. They're fabulous mm -hmm. pastas. Most commercially produced pasta will be made and dried within five hours. Right. This one here is going to take 24 hours. And this is a $5 package versus, let's say, $2.50 for another mm -hmm. one. When you break it down to the pennies and difference per serving, uh, and you've tried the difference, you would never go back to no, that. You for, don't. The, for the 20 cents proportion, it's not worth it. If you're just using olive oil in your kitchen at home, which one would you recommend? When someone comes in and says, I've only bought my olive oils at a supermarket, and I want to try something a little bit different, the one I bring them up to, the next level, is called Carly. You're getting a source of olives from that specific region, and you're getting uh, a manufacturing method that's not a mass-produced olive oil. Okay. And so that one there at $10 for half a liter starts to give me sort of the introduction to what I would call okay. estate oils here. It's olives just coming from one particular farm. So they're taking a couple of varieties of olives, blending them together to a certain characteristic that they want to have that, mm -hmm. that's typical of their olive oil. And at $20 a liter, you're getting to something now which is great for salads, great as a finishing oil, great as a mm -hmm. tipping oil. But now you're starting to get to points where every olive oil can be a little bit different depending on the variety of olive oil. And different use. flavors. That's right. Greek olive oils have always been very, very popular. Most of our Greek customers come and buy the big three liter cans. They tend to have that, that much more fruitiness and much more pepperiness mm -hmm. to them, which doesn't always appeal to a lot of people. Right. Um, there's a new one that's just come out from a gentleman that lives in the area here. Uh, his family farm is this Artemides uh, mm -hmm. olive, uh, olive oil here. And what they've done, is they, they, they have a farm in, in Greece and they've gone back and started to cultivate one of the original olive trees that dates back several thousand years but was very difficult to grow. Mm -hmm. And its olive oil is so different than the rest of the olives because it has more of a butteriness and a very li light flavor to it. Oh, and and cool. it's a fabulous olive, but you're now talking at $70 a bottle because of limited production. <laughs> so let's walk down and, and talk some vinegar. Well, semi vinegar is basically a, uh, a product of taking the must of the Trabianco grapes mm -hmm. and aging it in the wooden cask and as it's evaporating uh, it's going into smaller and smaller casks. So it's taking upon the flavors of the wood mm -hmm. and just through through evaporation as the, as the vinegar is getting thicker it's creating a very unique product uh, that's and only specifically done in the provinces of Modena and Reggio Emilia uh, okay. in Italy. You'll see a lot of companies that will say it's balsamic vinegar from Italy and mm -hmm. Modena but it, is, it needs to be also manufactured there and also bottled there. So you'll okay. always see that on any of the bottles. For instance, this one here, which I know is one of your favorites. It is truly one of my um, favorites. You know, when you look at a product like this and you just pour it on its side, you can just see almost the viscosity of it there. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. really is what balsamic vinegar is meant to be. Something that over time has been reduced and, and, and aged and you start to now use it you know, on cheese and with strawberries and even on ice cream. And our viewers have to realize that they can come in any time into the store and ask for yourself or any of your staff members to go over and spend some time with you. And we'll have to have extra bottles up for sampling and stuff like that so we get a chance just to taste it and really get an understanding of it. Because in the end, you've got to like it. I can tell you this is the best in the world, but if you don't like it, it's worth nothing. Here's to great eating. Remember, you're worth it. This is Chef Daryl for Chef DTV.